Man, this place goes to shit when JVL is gone for a few days. Let me tell you, <laughs> no. I am running ragged over here. I'm trying to write a newsletter. I'm hosting podcasts and woof. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Secret Podcast. I'm Sarah Longwell, sitting in for my buddy JVL, but I'm here with my other best friend, my old friend, Timothy Miller. This was such a terrible week for JVL to be out for JVL because there's a lot of, like, good JVL fodder in the news. Mm. Uh, we we got up this morning. We got another more than 300,000 jobs added to an already hot uh, job market with low unemployment. Wages are now outpacing inflation. And so I think, you know, we did a little bit of um, JVL is, you know, right a lot uh, stuff on, on the next level this week. But uh, this is... There's, there's, there's also a little JVL's kind of wrong sometimes. Well, the you know, JVL level, so can overstate. Yeah. He can overstate. <laughs> But I do think I do think his just like general um, and and nobody has fought with him more than I have about uh, how how early he decided that everything was fine and people were stupid. But uh, the reality has caught up, I think, with a lot of his um, angst about this. And uh, it's going to it's good for Joe Biden to have a strong economy. I, there's just sort of no two ways about it. And I think that the it's the, the thing about the jobs report that is, I think, interesting and important is the level of confidence in the stability of the economy is sort of what the Fed's going to need to lower interest rates, right? And so, uh, and them lowering interest rates, which I think is probably going to be, I don't know if you have a thought on this, uh, just like slightly politically complicated for them because they don't, they're very fiercely independent and don't want to be looked upon as uh, interfering politically or helping Joe Biden by lowering interest rates. But it will invariably help Joe Biden to have interest rates lowered. Yeah, I mean, uh, barring another round of inflation coming, um, you know, I'm not a yeah. macroeconomist, right? Um, uh, and so, and that's what I think what they're more concerned about is is making sure that inf the inflation issue is stamped out before they lower interest rates again. And you know, there was a three three percent increase or whatever in the last report, which is about normal, but uh, feels high when you're coming yeah. off of eight and ten percent right um, inflation. So. I, they should lower them. Hopefully, uh, we did. I did a podcast with Josh Barrow. It's what Josh Barrow wants. It's what Bill Crystal wants. All the smart people in my life want them to lower rates. I want them to lower rates. I'd like to refi. Um, so do the do the do the deal, Jerome Powell. I mean, I think your point about being scared of perception um, is something they consider. And again, it's like how the the our side, the anti-Trump coalition, like hamstrings ourselves constantly um, with like we, having to worry about the norms and the perceptions, which is good. I know, Sarah, I know you like that. You like to, you know, make sure that we're being good, good, good boys and girls over here. Um, I can tell but, by how hard you're rolling your eyes that yeah. you mean that as you say I it. think it's fine. I agree it's fine. I agree it's fine. It's just like, ugh, I, I just wish that we weren't the only ones worrying about this stuff. You don't think Don, Don, it's not even going to cross Donald Trump's cerebral cortex. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't tell the Fed, if he gets back in, the Fed to do the right thing. I and mean, immediately he'll get back in and just like, lower rates, cuck. You know, I mean, like, I, I demands to do it. And um, I think when Ben Bill wrote about this um, in Morning Shots, he was like that, that HW, this was something that they dealt with, and they kind of did pressure the Fed a little bit. And I'm like, if HW did it, that's that's kind of like a green light to me. So anyway, I, hopefully Jerome Powell does does the deal. The, um, the, the job numbers are good. I, I did, related to another topic you've been covering a lot lately, the TikTok. Um, I was on TikTok this morning. You were a little late. Um, and so I was on, I was on TikTok, and I was like, "Oh wait, I have to write a newsletter." So I was only on it for like three TikToks length of time. But in that three TikToks length of time, I saw a TikTok from a guy who's who is like a comedian. So okay, it's comedy, but it's like John Stewart like comedy, uh, politics comedy. And he's walking on the street. And he's talking about how all his friends are getting laid off. And how like the economy's tough for millennials and Gen Z right now, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Who like I I'm sure you have a friend that got laid off or something, but like uh, the unemployment, we're at 90s level unemployment right now, and so uh, this is con I, I do I am concerned about this that that despite the continued new jobs news, I think I would have thought by April 5th that the vibes would have been a little bit better. They're pretty yeah. good vibes are pretty good, but like it's still there's still some like. 
some lagging complaining out there in the world. There, there is. I do think we are um, fond of complaining these days, That's just true. in general. Um, and I still hear a lot of catastrophizing in the focus groups. Um, you know, when you ask people, how do you think things are going in the country? People still say terrible. Um, but I will uh, just with a nod to some of the green shoots, I will say in some of the Democratic groups, you're hearing more people say, I think things are getting better, feels better. So I think like we're just starting to hit like the the front part um, of of voters starting to feel like maybe things are turning around. Uh, and I think it's going to take a rate cut to get people like I think there's going to have to be like a real easing up on inflation that is noticeable for people to really see the turnaround. Um, yeah. One just thing, one other status on this. Yeah. And I don't have it in front of me because I didn't know this was going to be our topic. But um, there was a poll. Neither did uh, I. Yeah. That, well, you know, we just do that live on The Secret, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, the um, There's a poll that came out that was asking people – how is the is the econ- I don't I think it was has the economy gotten better I forget if it was has the economy gotten better in your state or had or how do you think the economy is doing in your state whatever it is in all the swing states it was like there was like plus twenty positive yeah. feelings about the economy and then when you ask the same people how the economy is going in America it, it's like minus twenty right yeah. and so it's, it's it's similar to the crime stuff but like you know where people are saying like yeah okay i don't know things seem to be going pretty good here in phoenix but out there in the world i don't know things seem bad out there i keep hearing bad stuff yeah social media did this to us uh because now if there's something bad anywhere somewhere something is bad <laughs> everywhere uh and yeah you know if you're you're at a, a a tech company, and AI is causing some layoffs because it's shifting. Uh, sorry, man, you're probably going to go have to go get a job in AI because it's changing it's changing the world. But there's also yeah. a lot of jobs out there. Uh, anyway, I, I, this is a good I, point, though. I do th- I worry about this, like kind of how you know media people, since they're so homogeneous, sometimes distort. Like what is happening they just do. because like if they're natural yeah. and, and I, you know, a lot of times conservatives will be like, that's bias. And I'm like, well, it's not always bias. Sometimes it's just that every a lot of a high percentage of people in the media have the same lives. So, so sometimes they over index on a certain concern. And I, I feel this way about the social media. Right. Because yeah. I do think there is disruption right now in the tech industry. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and you're seeing and you do you are seeing layoffs and churn. Now, my understanding is most of these people are getting jack jobs, and a lot of them have like RSUs and are you know buying houses in Tahoe and stuff. So it's not like well, you know, it's not a like Great Depression, but but they have influence on the so, on social media, right? Like the types of people that are experiencing this do, I think, have bigger microphones on yeah. you know t- Twitter and TikTok and and these various things, and maybe that also is contributing somewhat to the perception that there's. I think that and I also think like especially for young people, for the Zoomers, like they got robbed of a lot there during the pandemic and in their lives. And I think that there's just still a kind of a hangover from COVID in terms of uh, people not feeling settled in their lives and the world still seeming sort of, you know, I I don't know. I, I. I'm not close enough to it, but I feel like that's what I get a sense of when I do the younger focus groups is just uh, they've seen a lot of bad stuff yeah. uh, over the last decade. And I think for us who've seen uh, – we've seen the good and the bad. Uh, we lived through the, the roaring 90s. Yeah. Uh, you life know, was great. Life was and, – and so – Saved by and, the bell. And, and, and we still cl- – you know, we complained back then. I remember when I graduated college in 2002, there, everybody saved was – Saved by the bell the, yeah. the college years. That we did. That wasn't good. I, I, you it like wasn't. The years? I mean, I watched the college years because I watched that the whole way. As long, they did a reboot right now, and it was like the '40s, and everyone's getting, you know, they're for, and everyone's getting kind of like divorced and remarried, <laughs> and people are, you know, p- people Ugh. are taking their antidepressants, you know, whatever it was. <laughs> that they, I would watch that too. I would watch that too. Uh, R.I.P. Justin Diamond, uh, who played Screech. Justin. Um, Dustin, thank you. Oh, look at you. Look at you with that yeah, ball. Dude, I got my spades out of the bell knowledge. Come okay. On. So, uh, all right. My point is, is that J- if JBL... told you that when JBL's not here, things go things to fall, shit. Things fall apart. Uh, there's no fact checking. But when if JBL were here, he would be thrilled by yeah. this economic news and he would force us into a conversation. And I would be more on his side than I have been previously because I do think... There is starting to be like people are too committed to the negativity uh, and 
they're not looking at the fact that like we really are starting to hit a place where the indicators are all going the right way. But I think the rate cut, if it got, oh, this is the one thing I wanted to say to you, though, to your point about the, oh, we fight with our hands tied behind our back. See, that's not really what, I just want us to do the right thing, no matter what it is, sort of uh, irrespective of the optics. And so I neither want them to lower interest rates uh, because it is politically advantageous, if it's economically the wrong thing to do, nor do I want them to withhold a rate cut because they are overconsumed by the optics. And so if like the rate cut is what the Fed would do based on the factors they see on the ground, that's what they ought to do. And it feels like we're getting to that place. That's a Merrick Garland lesson. That's where he failed. Really. Yeah, it is. It is. He over he over worried about the optics and walked himself into a place where he was too slow uh, to do the right thing. And now ultimately they you got pushed into corners, had to do it because the facts were overwhelming, but then it was too late and everyone's mad because he moved too slow and Trump is delaying and delaying and George Conway and I have a great podcast we just dropped from yesterday uh, where we go deep into this Silene Cannon weird stuff and some of the other um, some of the other political news of the day. Go check it out. Hey, Sarah, there's there's more show. Oh, there is? But that's only for the, you know, the, the people who are inside the Velvet Rope, the, the Bulwark Plus members. Oh, they got to subscribe. Yeah. Tell them to subscribe. Tell the you people, You should subscribe. Sarah. Guys, why wouldn't you subscribe? You get all kinds of things. You get some some extra uh, me and JVL. You get some extra me and George Conway. Do you get Oh, you get JVL's triad. It's one of the best things the Bulwark offers. I read it at least once or twice a week. <laughs> yes. Go and subscribe. We'd love to have you.